Vicki Bell here. Welcome to today's Tuesday Tips. Today, we'll pick up where we left off last week. I received an email that the Puerto Rican displaced families are being assisted in Rochester, New York. Thank you to whoever sent me that. There are 100 children who have enrolled in the schools there since the hurricane. Today we'll talk about the components of the language access plan, which is the LAP plan. After completing the four components of the LEP plan and deciding what language assistance services you're going to provide or which are appropriate for your LEP population, a recipient may develop and implement a LAP plan to address and identify the needs of the LEP population that it plans to serve. Here are some of the components that are very helpful in that LAP plan. First, identify the LEP persons who need language assistance and specific type of language assistance that is needed. Language assistance may include, but is not limited to do, oral interpretation services, bilingual staff, telephone service lines and the interpreters, written translation services, notices to staff and recipients of the availability of LEP services, or referrals to the community liaisons that are proficient in the language of the LEP person. It may even include a family member as an interpreter, although HUD doesn't recommend this source. However, Management cannot require the LEP person to provide their own interpreter. I had a call and the manager, I was told that the manager at this property was requiring the families to bring their own interpreters in with them. They were requiring the applicants to bring their own interpreters in with them. You cannot do that because you should have a LEP program and a LEP plan. Keep in mind that HUD says the original signed lease has to be in English. However, the lease has to be provided in the language of the LEP person. The LAP plan should also include identifying the points and the types of contact the agency and staff may have with any LEP person. It also should include staff training on LEP issues, what to do if you have a person that comes in, what are the first steps that you do. Determining which documents and informa informational materials should be included and written in the LEP person's language, such as your model lease, your house rules, fair housing materials, things of that nature. You will want them to be in the LEP person's language so that they can read them. Providing appropriate notices for LEP persons, such as your eviction notices. You need to have them in their own language. Your emergency plan, so they'll know what to do. Providing interpreters for large, small, medium, or one-on-one -on -one meetings. Developing community resources and partnerships and other relationships to help you provide language services to the LEP person. Remember, Failure to provide LEP is a fair housing violation, and it receives the same penalties as any other fair housing violation. Hopefully, today's tips will help you with your review of your limited English proficiency program and your LAP plan. Thank you so much. See you next week.